What if I told you that companies laying off software engineers right now are making the single worst strategic mistake of their careers? While everyone's rushing to replace developers with AI, here's what they're missing. Microsoft uses AI to write 25% of its code, or so it says. Google's reporting 30%, and some startups claim like 95% AI code generated, right? That we're all hearing these numbers out here, and, and I'm going to tell you right away, those are just to inflate their stock values. But here's really the kicker that no one's talking about. When CodeFlash analyzed 100,000 AI-generated functions, they found that 62% of them would introduce bugs if accepted outright and not modified. That's right. The AI code that companies think will replace engineers is broken more than half the time. So why are companies firing the exact people who could save them from this disaster? Today, I'm going to show you why laying off engineers while betting on AI is one of the dumbest things you can do and probably business suicide. Let's dive in. Welcome to Startup Pack. I'm Spencer, and here at Startup Pack, we train software developers in our coding boot camps and build custom software solutions for companies. With a decade of executive leadership as a fractional CTO and 25 years in software development, I've mastered transforming tech teams and products. All right, so today we're going to talk about the absolute worst decision that I'm seeing companies make. Those that are thinking they can cut engineering teams because they think AI is going to do the work for them. Now, this isn't just short-sighted. It could be really catastrophic, and I'm going to prove it to you with some real data and examples from companies that are already paying the price. Now, while uh, from CodeFlash presented a shocking set of data at a recent conference that 62% of AI-generated code optimized uh, optimizations contained bugs. Microsoft uses AI for a reported 25% of its code and Google for 30%, and some startups are claiming 95% AI-generated code. But nobody's really measuring the quality. Now, I know Microsoft and Google are, and from what I'm getting from people that are on the inside of these, most of the 25 and 30% is like testing code or framework code, right? And they generate the code and they say, hey, look, it was done, and then it'll be tweaked by a human and they aren't really reporting that, right? Because Google and Microsoft are on an arms race right now to try to get their AI to the highest numbers they can. But when a company like CodeFlash tests 100 open source functions and they find that 90% of all optimizations suggest were incorrect or provided no benefit, the fundamental problem is that AI prioritizes functionality over performance and can't verify correctness through actual benchmarking. Now, companies are unknowingly accumulating mass technical debt by shaping uh, AI-generated code without proper human oversight. Now, engineers, if you're going to lay off engineers, this is the wrong people to do because these are the ones who should be catching these bugs. So the most successful developers today I know are those who can quickly adapt to using these AI tools to generate some boilerplate code, use it function by function, or to use it to analyze code and then go do their work, right? AI augmented developers are delivering results that are really awesome, right? Like this is a huge thing and I'm a huge fan of a lot of the AI tools for development like GitHub Copilot and Cursor and some of these others, right? But you, you need to be able to learn to effectively prompt, guide, and verify that last part super critical, AI generated code, and it's becoming a really critical skill. And so I'm hearing about people who are getting turned down in job interviews because they like poo poo on AI. So that's not a good idea. And there's a reason why it's because it does make you more effective, but it's not going to replace you, right? The same way that a, a previous person who said if they were going to not use a compiler, like you'd think they were ridiculous. That's kind of where we're getting to with AI. You want to use it. It's a helpful tool, but you've got to know its boundaries, right? Cross-functional skills that bridge technology and business domains are becoming increasingly, increasingly more valuable with those who can leverage the AI and use it in these cross-functional skills. Now, AI might generate a function component, and it's going to work really well, but it's not going to understand how that fits into the complex enterprise system. The most expensive problems in software aren't writing individual functions. They're making different systems work reliably together, right? So companies are discovering that AI-generated systems work in isolation but fail catastrophically when integrated with existing infrastructure. So in my years of development, integration issues cause the most complex and costly problems, not writing an individual function. So laying off people who can prevent integration disasters are like firing your foundational engineers while building a skyscraper, right? So the barrier to entry have never been lower. A small team of AI fluent developers can now create products that would have required a lot of developers previous. But this should mean that you should be going more in on your engineers, not less. This means that they can accomplish more. Companies that keep their engineering teams are building AI native products that will, current, uh, that will make current offerings look like flip phones, right? 
While you're cutting costs, your competitors are, are, re are reimagining entire industries with AI at the core. So look what's happening with Google search. For the first time in 20 years, their monopoly is being challenged by AI native approaches. Google hasn't moved search in 20 years. I want you to think about that for a minute. It's one of the largest cash cows out there. And yet they haven't made this move. And now all these new incumbents are threatening their crown, right? So this strategic imperative is super clear. This isn't time to be cutting development teams. It's time to double down on them and use the new power to make them augmented and accelerated. So if your company isn't proactively building the next generation of products, your competitors absolutely are. Now, if your company has to have systems that aren't connected, reach out to us because here at Startup Hack, our specialty is connecting systems so your company can work awesome. So check out startuphack.com slash Spencer. Now, engineering talent was already really scarce, right? And now companies are artificially making it look even scarcer by laying people off. People are playing, and I've done some videos on uh, people, um, you know, playing these engineering games and hiring where they make in hiring so complicated. But many of the best engineers who got laid off are starting their own companies or joining startups with better opportunities. When companies realize their mistake to try to hire these engineers back, these engineers are going to be way too expensive or too busy to care. The few serious developers left will charge rates that will that will make executives cry and they should because if you let them off there you're gonna have to pay a lot to get them back because now you've got a whole bunch of spaghetti ai code right so code flash's study of 100,000 open source functions found that 62 percent of ai generated code optimizations would introduce bugs if they'd gotten accepted of the optimizations that were correct 73 percent resulted in performance gains below five percent or even decreased speed adding complexity without benefit so let me repeat that if they even the ones that were correct were barely marginal gains for no uh, for no reason other than making a code change or they actually decrease the speed this means that 90 percent of all ai optimization suggestions were either wrong or useless so at major companies 25 to 30 percent of the code saying that they're being written by ai and in some startups they're saying even more really just means there's a whole bunch of hidden bugs out there or false optimizations that are complex or overly complex for really not a whole lot. So the reliability problem becomes exponentially worse when dealing with complex interconnected enterprises. Now, if you think I'm just hating on AI, think again. I'm saying that you should be out there learning how to use it. It's not going away. Just because we're seeing the bubble start to burst does not mean that AI is going away. It's not what it means. When we saw the bubble burst in 2000 and 2001 with the dot com, we were left with the internet, which eventually grew to web 2.0. This is what we're going to see with AI. We're going to see some awesome tools come out of this. So this is your opportunity to grab those tools and run with them. Now, junior developers learn by working with experienced engineers on real problems, not watching AI generated boilerplates. Companies aren't investing in junior developers because they think AI will handle everything. The next generation of programmers will grow up expecting AI to do the hardest parts and won't know how to build resilient systems. This creates a missing generation of engineers who never learn fundamental problem solving skills. When AI fails or hits its limitations, there won't be enough experienced engineers who know how to handle real world chaos. That's why here at Startup Hack, we love to train software developers, and we're reaching out to those who are in Utah or in Idaho to start with our registered apprentice program. This is an awesome opportunity where you can come to us, go to startuphack.com slash jobs, and this is an awesome chance for you to be able to get paid a training wage for a year's internship to learn how to gain software development experience. We'll teach on the job, we'll get put you into real jobs, and get you real software development experience. This is the best way to learn. The only thing required is to be 18 and to have a high school diploma. That's it. And the rest, anybody else, just come and apply. Startuppack.com slash jobs. Because the most valu valuable engineers aren't just code writers. They're ones who understand your business domain and can translate requirements into working systems. AI generated code, uh, AI can generate code, but it can't replace the critical thing you needed to determine what should be built in the first place. It's not going to innovate for you. When you lay off engineers, you're losing this critical innovation piece. You're losing years of accumulated knowledge about your systems, processes, and business logics. These engineers know where all the bodies are buried in your code base and how to navigate your legacy because you know what they call, uh, what they call real requirements. They call it code. That's what real requirements are. So replacing domain expertise is increasingly expensive and time consuming, much more than teaching someone a new syntax. Now, I'm sure everybody's heard about Duolingo and about Klarna, 
who were some of the poster children for laying off AI developers. And they've both retracted this week and come back because they have seen massive hits. Uh, uh, Duolingo saw almost, a, if I remember right, it was a 40% loss in their premium subscribers. And Klarna has just seen a massive lash, uh, backlash of customer support who are saying that their customer support from AI is terrible. So when these layoffs backfire, the cost to rebuild engineering teams is going to be three to five percent. What company, three to five times what companies are saving today? Hiring back engineers means paying premium salaries, dealing with extended timelines, and rebuilding lost institutional knowledge. So meanwhile, your product development stalls. Competitors are gaining market share, and the technical debt accumulates. The fintech companies that fire engineers and then discover security holes will face regulatory penalties as well that dwarf any kind of payroll savings. So you're optimizing for quarterly cost savings while creating ex uh, existential business risk. So my advice here at Startup Hack, double down, train more developers, get more developers on your staff. This is a time to accelerate. When, you're, uh, when your competition thinks that they can coast with AI tools, this is your time to double down and go hard at it to really gain the competitive advantage. AI tools are creating a lot of improvements for developers, right? So it can make us so a developer is more productive. And that's great. This productivity boost means one developer can accomplish a lot more. That's true. But this doesn't mean that you should be laying off developers. It means they should use this productivity gain to tackle previously impossible problems, not to reduce headcount. The developers who master AI assisted development will become increasingly valuable not redundant. I tell my developers all the time, AI won't replace you, but a developer who knows how to use AI might. Now, cross-functional skills, the bridge technology and business domains are becoming increasingly valuable. This is where you will see differentiation. Problem solving skills, system design, and integration expertise are becoming super critical today, not less valuable. Now, what are your thoughts? Do you agree? Do you disagree? I love to have a great discussion here at Startup Hack. We love to train software developers and as well as to build custom software solutions for companies. So check us out at startuphack.com slash Spencer, and here's some great information about some of our services. Hi, my name is Spencer Thomason, and I'm a fractional CTO. With over a decade of executive leadership and a solid 25 years in software development, I've mastered the art of transforming technology teams and products. So what is a fractional CTO? This is where you can contract someone like myself to come into your organization and get the benefits of a seasoned CTO without having to employ me full time. In today's fast paced world, efficiency, security, and product scaling aren't just goals, they're necessities. My passion is building impactful products and enhancing organizational efficiencies through technology. From startups to small businesses, my approach leverages lean methodologies to not just meet but exceed your strategic goals. Whether it's through executive mentoring, cloud system architecture, or launching a minimum viable product swiftly, my aim is to make a significant impact right from the start. Recognized in the Arizona startup ecosystem, my journey has been about creating value and fostering innovation. I have led technology for companies like GoDaddy, SRP, and Wells Fargo, and turned challenges into milestones. I've taken this learning and launched seven of my own brands, and now I want to help you. So if you're looking for a fractional CTO who brings a wealth of experience, strategic vision, and a proven track record, let's connect. Together we can build technology that not only drives your business forward, but also makes a difference. Technology leadership redefined to fit your needs. So reach out today.